You may hear your loved one's level of injury mentioned frequently. Level of injury refers to where the spinal cord is functioning and is also known as the neurological level of injury. Doctors determine this by assessing the movement and sensation at or below a certain level on the spinal cord. The level of injury designation is a letter followed by a number that corresponds to the spinal nerves. Refer to this subchapter for information if your loved one has a thoracic level of injury from T1 to T12. T stands for thoracic, and the numbers 1 through 12 correspond with the spinal nerves in that section of the spinal cord. Keep in mind that these are general guidelines for levels of injury, and your own or your loved one's injury may differ due to its individual type and severity. The level of independence achieved also has much to do with the patient's health at the time of injury. This includes body type, existing medical conditions, and other injuries that may have occurred at the time of the accident. The thoracic portion of the spinal column runs through the majority of the trunk between the cervical and lumbar regions. T1 is at the top of the thoracic spine across the shoulder area. T4 is located at the nipple line. T10 is at the belly button, while the lowest section at T12 is at the bottom of the ribs. The lower the level of injury number, the higher in the body the injury is located. Of the thoracic levels of injury, a T1 injury impacts movement and sensation the most, while an injury to T12 impacts them the least. Injuries at or below the thoracic spinal levels result in paraplegia, or the loss of movement and sensation in the legs, and can also impact control of the trunk. Hands, arms, neck, and the ability to breathe are usually not affected. T1 to T5 spinal nerves are connected to the muscles of the hand, upper chest, and mid-back. At this level of injury, arm and hand function is usually normal. T6 to T12 spinal nerves control all of the chest, trunk, and abdominal muscles. The person injured at this level should be able to cough productively, usually has normal upper body movement, and fair to good ability to control and balance the trunk. Additional effects for people with T1 to T12 spinal nerve injury can include weakened breathing and lower endurance, and little or no voluntary control of bowel and bladder function. People with T-level injuries can usually learn to manage their personal bowel and bladder programs. Those with T-level injuries will most likely use a manual wheelchair. They can, in most cases, learn to drive a modified car or a van, as well as get in and out of it without assistance. Wide ranges of driving equipment and vehicle modifications are available today for those who can find sources of support. People with T-level injuries can most likely get in and out of bed without assistance and can perform care tasks such as grooming, bathing, and dressing independently. With practice, they can transfer themselves into and out of their wheelchair, shower, or tub. Those with T1 through T10 injuries may be able to stand in a standing frame device, while others may be able to walk with leg braces for distances up to 150 feet. Persons with T11 and T12 injuries may have greater range of mobility. Persons with T1 to T6 level injuries may require assistance with maintaining their home. People with T7 to T12 level injuries will require assistance with heavy housework, perhaps as much as three hours per day from a loved one or caregiver. It's a good idea to begin thinking about family members, friends, community, or church groups that can help with this type of support when the time comes to leave the trauma care center, or perhaps after additional care at a rehabilitation facility. Home modifications may be necessary for persons with T-level injuries. Accessibility is key. Widened doorways and ramps instead of stairs will help you or your loved one considerably. Strongly consider making countertops, sinks, and stoves accessible, as well as making bathrooms as easy to navigate as possible. 
ramps, wider doors, special sinks, grab bars, and easy-to-turn doorknobs make it possible for spinal cord injured persons to live more independently than ever before. Friends, family, church, and community groups may also pitch in to help with home modifications and fundraisers. Many people receive funding assistance or donations from special events, local businesses, groups, and even individuals. Later in the rehabilitation process, you'll hear the term functional progression, which refers to expected recovery progress and chance of improved physical functioning as time goes on. It may partly depend on whether your loved one's trauma care center stay is followed up with visits to or a stay at a rehabilitation facility. No matter what, it's very important to develop a consistent care routine to help your loved one's possible progress. After a spinal cord injury, your loved one will gradually improve. And one of the best ways to monitor this is that if there's any feeling or any movement below the level of the injury, this is a very positive sign. This is something that you can build upon. Gradually over time, the therapists and the rehabilitation folks will try to help drive greater recovery from that little bit of recovery that you're beginning to see. This recovery can occur for weeks and months and sometimes even years. So it's real important for you to push those gains that you see, but also it's very important to begin to accept any limitations in recovery that may come about so that your loved one can move on with life using assistive devices, using those means by which uh, he or she can return to a normal life. At this time, we'll continue on to the last chapter of the video. Chapter 6 provides practical advice for how to deal with the injury and its consequences to your loved one and your family. Lee Woodruff starts off the chapter. She has some great advice because she and her family have been through and survived a catastrophic injury themselves. It's an important part of the video.